The race to carbon neutrality is on, and electric vehicles are playing a big role in accelerating the journey. Global sales for electric cars doubled in 2021, and the trend is expected to continue. Audi is revving up its strategy to be future fit, balancing innovation and technology with luxury in its drive to lead in manufacturing premium sustainable vehicles. What will this electric future look like in South Africa? I caught up with Hildegard Wortmann, member of the Board of Management of Audi AG for Sales and Marketing, and Andre Kontzbrook, Vice President for Overseas Sales at the Sanctuary Mandela, to speak about the global move towards electric and digitized mobility. This particular uh, discussion, uh, just by way of introduction, perhaps uh, tell us a little bit about your, yourselves, the respective roles that you play at uh, Audi and also how you are progressing the brand's uh, philosophy uh, into the future. Well, first of all, um, I've, I've been in this automotive industry now for quite a long time, but I personally believe right now is the most exciting time to be in there. And the reason for that, I'm saying this, is um, you know everything is happening at the same time. We go all electric, we go digital, we look into autonomous driving, which is the big game changer really uh, that, that's coming up. And all of this is happening at the same time. And there's a unique chance in this to redefine the car and to redefine the importance of, of this industry. And um, I think it's, it's, it's great to be part of this and um, yeah, trying to bring contribution into, into, into this situation. And uh, do you share the same sentiments? Are you uh, equally or similarly as excited as Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. I'm, I'm now with Audi since more than 30 years. And I really, I, I, I joined the company when we were really very low volume and then we grew, we were very successful. Yeah, but we never experienced this kind of transformation that we're experiencing today. So it's, everything is completely changing. And for me, which is even more exciting, you know, being uh, responsible for the overseas markets. So I'm covering 70 markets, um, a lot of smaller markets where the development sometimes happen in a different way, not, not necessarily just slower because you have very advanced uh, countries also part of it. So, and that makes it really fascinating that we try to not only to copy, but even really in parallel to develop similar things than, that are more available to Europe uh, in the first stage. So, uh, so we try always to catch up and, and just to be part of the transformation from the very beginning and that's really exciting. And a part of that uh, transformation in terms of the group strategy, you uh, guys are looking at uh, producing all your new vehicles being all electric by 2026. The rest of the, your fleet, I'm uh, told, will uh, catch up to that deadline by 2030. So talk to us a little bit more about your uh, global strategy as it does pertain to the future of premium mobility. Yeah, I mean, first of all, we believe in that the future clearly is electric and we are really driven by this, this idea and uh, went, like you said, in a, into a very bold move saying as of 2026, we will only launch new cars completely electric. Sure. And uh, when we announced this, a lot of people thought, wow, this is wow, what they are talking about. But we believe, you know, it's, it's also a question of mindset. You need to take this bold action in order to really create impact, to really foster change. And we believe that this is the right way to go into this. So we have decided by 2026 all new models of, of the Audi brand will be electric only. And then obviously you need some time to change all of your portfolio. So by 2030, 2032, we will then go all electric with all the cars there. And, um, but you know, it's, it's not just about creating battery electric cars. It is really about driving this transformation. It is about decarbonization. That's really the mission behind it. And we need to create with that the whole ecosystem in it. So it's not just the hardware of one car, but it's the infrastructure going with that. It's the total supply chain going with that. So it's the whole ecosystem and across the whole value chain that needs to change and drive this transformation into more sustainable future. And with that, we want to contribute into, into creating this future of mobility in a very premium way. Andre, you spoke about the nuances of operating in a vast number of uh, markets and just uh, the uh, level of uh, transformation and progression that happens at different uh, stages. So as it does pertain to your uh, group target in terms of e-mobility, uh, maybe just a bit of color as to what that looks like here in Africa on the continent and how that compares. Yeah, so when we just look globally, just to, to give you a comparison, you know, we, we are seeing really a dramatic change towards uh, electrification. So the EV market grew by 68% last year, now is already reaching 
7.8 million cars globally, which is 10% of global uh, sales. So, and then you can see in comparison, uh, where are we now in, on the African continent? Yeah? And when I'm talking about the African continent, the biggest market and the most relevant one is of course South Africa for us. And there we, we still see there's still a lot of room for improvement. There's still a long way to go uh, for the time being. You know, we, we, we roughly registered 1% um, of uh, our total sales were uh, battery electric vehicles. Yeah? Even though we had a progression of 130%, which sounds very good, it's still that the volume is really, really low. And the, the, the reasons for this are various, are multiple reasons, because in those markets where we see a fast transformation, we see it's mainly driven by regulators and also by charging infrastructure. Of course, the mind shift, and, and that's really important, how customers really uh, change also, uh, also in, the, in their mindset. Um, but you need a combination of all three really to make it happen. Yeah? And that's what is currently lacking in South Africa. Uh, for the time being, you know, we still have the same import tax. Uh, we uh, for, for electric vehicles, we, we don't see the, the charging infrastructure really developing. So we are doing our own contribution as Audi. We already started to invest in charging infrastructure. We will put in place another uh, program of more than 70 bi uh, million uh, rand. Uh, but for sure, it's still just not enough. Yeah? So we will need much more people to engage. Most likely also the private sector, but hopefully sure. also some at one point of time, also the government. Sure. Please excuse me for this. Uh, my German is not uh, A grade, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm sure you do well. <laughs> <laughs> the calling card for the Audi brand has long been Vorsprung durch Technik. You said it perfectly. I hope so. <laughs> and you're, very, you're very kind. <laughs> but uh, just talk to um, us about that uh, calling card of the Audi brand and how it really does translate into the future. Yeah. Well, Vorsprung durch Technik or there Progress by Technology, <laughs> and you said that absolutely perfect. You know, this is this is the ambition behind the brand. This is what drives Audi. And we have this slogan for like over 30 years and it expresses what Audi stands for. And you, you will never give that up. You never give up your ambition. But we, I mean, realizing how the world around is changing, realizing in the times that we are the vulnerability of our world, we, we realize that the meaning of progress that what, what describes progress needs to change. So it's no longer about the things that are technologically possible, but it's about those things that are, are meaningful in a technological way. So progress needs to be redefined into rather, you know, contributing to the bigger cause, giving something back to society and not just a purely technological mastermind. And when saying that, um, we have this element of progress and you have this element of technology. And when we talk about technology, we think that this technology needs to be meaningful to fulfill things like the decarbonization and bringing a, um, a contribution to society in them. So we will hold on to Vorsprung durch Technik, but the meaning of it will become different. And um, I think we, we well express this in our hashtag future as an attitude, sure. and that shows more what is behind it. Yeah? So to have the attitude, to have the mindset, to embrace the change, to embrace the environmental challenges here, and um, that do our contribution towards it. Sure. Let's talk more then about that uh, mindset and the uh, shift, particularly in the customer mindset that uh, you are seeing. I mean, Andre, you mentioned uh, the uh, comparisons between what you are seeing in more developed markets uh, versus the uh, continents. But even with uh, the shift in the mindset towards electric vehicles that you are seeing in some of your more developed uh, markets, do you reckon that it's happening uh, fast enough, uh, specifically to uh, help uh, players like your Ourselves to achieve some of the targets that you do have in the space. So, what we are seeing is that, the, 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 as I say, the mindset is really changing. So, the, the um, for us, um, the sustainability is the new kind of premium, um, if you want it this way. So, people really experience every day the climate change personally, or see it on social media. They really see what's happening around the world, and they really are we asking and demanding for, for answers around how, how are we going to solve this climate or how are we going to protect uh, our climate? How, how do we provide answers to social questions? And at the end of the day also, how do we provide a responsible um, uh, corporate governance? So uh, success of a company 
is not anymore defined by its products or its financial results uh, in the future, but it's the, the so-called environmental social governance, the ESG. Yeah? That's really becoming very, very relevant uh, also for Audi. We believe that the brand um, uh, cannot survive in the future if you are not into the social governance and also sustainability. So, and that's what um, really, so is it happening fast enough? Uh, of course it could happen uh, uh, always faster, yeah? But the, as I said already before, the transformation also we are seeing in developed markets is really fast, um, and also triggered by, by external influences, yeah? So it's a, a lot of people are contributing to this, to this fast development, um, but it's, um, but it's really also people who really ask for it, yeah? Uh, a recent survey showed that 64% of people are even prepared to pay a higher price for more sustainable products, um, also for more responsible sourcing. So these are all topics which are on our agenda because uh, so people are even prepared to pay more for that uh, and to contribute to a better world. I think it's, I sometimes refer to the ESG as being the license to operate. Sure. So, you know, it's not about fulfilling a nice marketing thing or so. It is really the license to operate in your business. And ESG is not like a trend topic, but uh, it, it is there to stay. You have to fulfill it. And the reason is because otherwise you will not stay relevant to the consumers. The consumers, as you rightly said, the consumers are demanding this. And if, especially if you look into the younger generation, Gen Z, etc., you know, they, they expect us to be ESG compliant. They expect us, for all the good reasons, to, to take action on this. And um, so for me, it's not a nice to have, it is a must have. It's a license to operate and it's um, the, the only way forward to stay relevant in your business. Uh, so clearly very important, but from a practical point of view, are there any complexities you have found in your journey of becoming a lot more ESG compliant today than you were, say, four or five years ago? Well, I think there's a lot of complexity, there's a lot of challenges, there's no you know, easy answers. We are in an industry that you know, has a long, long history and you need to change a few things like fundamentally. So if you look into the supply chain, for example, um, we, ha we are already since years in talks with um, um, you know, a lot of our suppliers into defining what are the criteria in the supply chain to fulfill this, this ambition that we have. But equally in our own company, in terms of leadership principles, in terms of um, educating the, the teams, it takes each and everyone in such an organization to embrace this change and to be part of it and, and lead forward. And um, that has a complexity and, and some challenges, um, if you think of the raw materials, etc., that are huge. But sure. you know we need to tackle them, and um, I think it's, uh, it's always good to start, and then whilst, whilst you're on your way, you take your next steps. And we have a cl very clear vision. I think that's that's important. So you know where to go. We we have a clear target there. And um, for example, on the production side, we can say already today, the, the our plant in Brussels where we produce our e-tron um, is already CO2 neutral and balanced since 2018. We have the um, Berliner Höfe where the e-tron GT is produced is already CO2 neutral. And um, the other all the other plants will uh, continue and, and will happen until 2025. And these are big con uh, commitments, also financial commitments into this. Mm -hmm. But again, it's our clear, clear commitment to society and our clear commitment to, to the change that we want to embrace. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, reflecting on uh, some of those changes further, particularly from a consumer perspective, Andre, you did mention that uh, some of your uh, customers, just given the uh, increased demand for um, greener mobility, as it were, were willing to pay even more uh, for, for, for the product, just to playing their role essentially in the entire ecosystem. But just talk to us uh, more specifically perhaps about the, um, the changes uh, to the future of mobility and what that means for how your customer engages uh, with, with the, um, the vehicle, of the, the purchasing of the vehicle and the ownership uh, of the vehicle. Yeah, in an increasing digital world that we are all experiencing, also like like for the, the EV transformation, we're also experiencing currently a huge digital transformation. Um, our consumers really are more and more demanding and they really expect really a seamless connection between information and personal contact. So that means we as a, as a company, we have to provide, uh, if you want to be customer centric and really provide the customer with what he expects, we have to provide him with this seamless omni-channel um, uh, customer journey. Meaning that the customer can decide at any point of time on his journey uh, whether he, when, how, 
and where he wants to purchase um, uh, his car or whatever uh, services which are associated with the car. So that's, that's one portion where we say, as a customer-centric company, we have to, uh, to really balance well this physical and digital, and Hildegard always calls it digital. We have to become much more digital. Um, uh, really, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm always using it, but I mention her. So, and uh, that's the one thing. But when we talk about future mobility, of mobility is, I think, goes beyond just a simple purchase of a car, a new car or a used car. It's about all the services which are related to the car in a first step. So that means also our customers expect that on the same platform, on one unique platform for convenience reasons, so you can purchase finance products, warranties, um, service maintenance packages, but also um, charging solutions, um, charging boxes, um, parking, um, so all kind of services which goes uh, with, with the car or booking online, of course, their service. So we need to provide also here that platform where everything is really on one single platform and not that you have to open uh, uh, hundreds of different apps to do this or this. And we call it the Audi, so-called Audi ecosystem, which will regroup all these services. And last but not least, we will go into uh, more and more into autonomous driving. So we all believe it will happen. So it's, it's just a matter of time. There's some individuals who are currently under yeah. fire over yeah. whether that uh, will indeed yeah. happen or whether it's happening already. So but you're confident uh, we're going there. But yeah, well, definitely. And, and, and you can imagine when people are not busy anymore driving the car and looking at the traffic around and whatever, but just spend time in the car to commute uh, from A to B. So the, 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 the big question is, okay, what do we need to offer as a manufacturer to as a user experience or even as an entertainment. So there's also a huge opportunity to provide them also with movies, with, um, uh, but also with um, points of interest search, uh, with uh, even bookings for whatever hotels, uh, everything. So everything they could do at their home, we have to enable them to do it in the car in the same way, in the same convenient way than they, as they would sit in front of their computer. So, and that's a, a big opportunity also for us where we are thinking about a lot of solutions. We developed already Holoride uh, with these virtual glasses where people can experience movies in, in a different way. So this is all part of this entertainment, but I would not say it's just entertainment. It's just really for convenience, making, yeah, it's user experience at the end of the day. It. And so, this is not the driver, or are we going to a future in which even the driver the is doing this? Even the driver, so it's, it's all the people involved or sitting in the car, and that's about future of mobility, so it's much more than online sales or e-commerce of a new car. It's, um, it's about everything connected to the car and maybe everything connected to your private life, which Hopefully one day in a fully autonomous car um, will be very exciting to, to spend some time in the car and then do something completely different. <laughs> you sound incredibly excited about that oh, yeah. future yourself, um, as though you wish it uh, was uh, the current present. But I imagine that all of that and that entire suite offering would not come at uh, the uh, compromise of luxury, just given the fact that uh, Audi has posi positioned itself quite strongly as a, a luxury uh, offering in the automobile sector. So. How does the uh, maintaining the position of luxury against balancing the aspects of sustainability uh, look like? And will there be any impact as you drive towards this greener future? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, I don't see it as against each other. I think, um, in a way, sustainability is the new luxury mm -hmm. because there, will, there won't be any luxury that is not sustainable. So I think you, you need to really change this mindset into sustainability does not mean that you have to give up something or that you do something not so nice. Yeah? So it's, you, know, you can enjoy life, you should enjoy life, you can enjoy luxury, but it must be possible to do this in a very sustainable way. So I think this is rather a combination than an either or. Yeah? So it's, it's, it's an either end. And um, I think this will be the big, um, the, the big denominator for the luxury business. And you see this across other industries. You see it in the fashion industry, if you see it in, in the luggage industry, etc. The aspect of sustainability becomes much more a decisive factor in there, whether you're still relevant as a luxury brand in this consumer group or not. So um, again, um, sustainability is a must have and not a nice to have, and it's part of the luxury. Part of the luxury. So, just uh, more more detail on uh, the the customer. 
as it were. I mean, you say that a lot of the customers that you're engaging with across the world are getting it, um, some more than others in terms of their increased appetite for the current uh, portfolio. But the others that uh, perhaps are lagging or falling behind, just uh, what are you seeing from them in terms of their concerns around e-mobility? I think the main concerns and that we also experienced in Europe and in the US in the very beginning, and I think um, that that was, of course, about range. Um, so, uh, and how do I, uh, I charge the car and how long does it take? And it was so convenient in the past and whatever, uh, because they never experienced properly how easy it is because you do it overnight and you always drive a fully charged car. So it means uh, which you would never do with an ICE car. So that's, uh, it's about range. Uh, in some countries it's about, uh, of course, the range thing is even reinforces when you have this safety issues where people say, imagine in the middle of the road I would stop um, and uh, run out of electricity. Uh, uh, how I will not be safe anymore. So these are these, these are the, the main things. So it's about people really it's still they, they use the car for mobility. Yeah, it's to be mobile. So they want to go from A to B, and charging infrastructure is uh, and combined with range is the main topic that people talk about. But me using a car and we all driving, of course, these cars now for a couple of years already. Uh, say it is not an issue, but but you have to experience. I really understand why people believe this is an issue. But when you drive a car and then and then you plan differently how you drive the car, it's not an issue at all. Yeah? And also we, we see with with the improvement of battery technology that range is no longer the real topic. And the the early days of um, battery electric cars it uh, was clearly a theme. But if you now look, I mean, if you look at the e-tron or the new uh, Q8 e-tron, we have a range of 500 plus, 600 plus kilometers. So that's what you would have in a petrol engine as well. So this range topic is more a um, psychological thing at the moment. Matter of fact, um, the new electric cars are all in, in, within a range that is absolutely acceptable. So this will go away. You know, sure. Um, sure. I think it uh, would be remiss of us to not uh, also just uh, touch on a point that you also mentioned about perhaps some... Um, reservations uh, from uh, some consumers to adopt um, electric cars to the extent that others are. And that is uh, the uh, issue around uh, price. So perhaps without delving just too deeply into that, just uh, your, your, your projections on, on, on price and what will it take and how long it will take for um, such cars to be a lot more accessible to more of your consumers than, um, than you'd like. Well, first of all, um, I believe, and I'm, I know this is, uh, this is tough to say, but I think individual mobility will become more expensive sure. because we will see that the cost of batteries, the, the cost that go into such a car have, in, have increased so significantly that mobility as such, individual mobility as such will, will increase um, in, in the price point. That's, that's very clear. Um, nevertheless, of course, we need to make sure that we have a full range there. And being part of the Volkswagen Group, we have different brands going into different segments. Oh, right. So we can we can make make sure that you know our customers find in the different brands of the Volkswagen Group um, the right portfolio and the right offering um, for them. For Audi, clearly, I mean, we have we have started our mission with the um, e-tron, which is now the Q8 e-tron, so a larger SUV. We then launched the e-tron GT and the RS e-tron GT as I would say the two brand pinnacles, the icons of the brand, taking the Audi brand forward. And now with the Q4, something that is far more accessible and that goes into a more broader reach and approachability for consumers. Okay. And obviously there will be more models to follow, which I'm not going to talk about today. So you're not going to break the news on our channel? Mm, no, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I might, I might come back for that one. <laughs> we look forward to that uh, future conversation. But just uh, as we wrap up and on the future, so you have announced your entry into the uh, Formula One, a lot of excitement and a lot of buzz around that. So let's just talk about that and uh, what that means. I mean, particularly in terms of whether the brand's technology will drive your competitiveness in the F1 or whether it uh, will be the reverse and some of the uh, technologies there will filter then into your customer vehicles. I think it's both of that. I mean, for us clearly, I mean, motorsport and rallies have always been in the DNA of Audi. And if you want to go into the, in the top class of motorsports, it is the Formula One. There is no other platform, no other engagement that has that sort of global reach, that has that sort of master class of, of motorsports. So Audi being in that field, we see ourselves, of course, we want to compete in that top league, and that is 
the reason for going into Formula One. And I talked before about how we how we define progress and technology. And I think this whole Formula One gives now a perfect platform for us to prove on the technology points and show the capabilities of the brand. And we should not forget, I mean, the, the, the Formula One regulation has changed as well, and Audi will start as of 2026 in there. And um, we think, you know, this the Formula One circus, as it's sometimes referred to from the past, needs to also change, needs to also go through this transformation. And we want to be part of driving this transformation. So with Audi entering 2026, I think we, we had quite an impact as well into driving the Formula One also into a more sustainable um, happening. And um, with that, I think it's a, it's a perfect fit for us. Playing in the top league with our DNA of motorsports and in, an, in a much more environmental um, friendlier environment and regulation um, surrounding. So we are all excited about this. <laughs> Andre, anything uh, from your front to add just regarding the F1 and uh, some of the lessons that perhaps could come out for the electric car industry? No, for me, it's, of course, it was really exciting, especially for my region, because as you know, when you look at today at the circuit, and hopefully in 20, by 26 it will be the same, you know, we have a couple of races in the Middle East region, uh, we are in Singapore, so we are already very, very present in my region, yeah. so there's a lot of excitement uh, about it, and I think even Rally Dakar has shown even in the first year and now in the second year, but that the technique was perfect. Yes, you can always have an accident or this kind of thing, but the technique really worked perfectly also in, the, in these really tough, tough conditions. Yeah, you know? It was pioneering again. Yeah. I mean, electric car in, in the rally Dakar is again Audi pioneering new technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the speed not compromised, of course. Yeah. And that was, no, and that was really uh, exciting. And everybody's picking this up and putting pictures in the showroom. So it's not only about us, uh, as a brand and, and, and how we communicate externally. It's about all the people in Audi, but also our entire organization are really fascinated when we do these kind of things because we pick up challenges that nobody would really expect us to do. I think nobody expects us to go into Formula One. Nobody definitely expects us to go to Rally Dakar. Yeah? And they love these kind of challenges, yeah. They um, and uh, because they have something to talk about, they have a story to tell, and uh, we provide them with some uh, material. So uh, the entire organization is really excited about it, even down to the to our technicians, salespeople. Um, everybody talks about Formula One. I think even the coverage globally was yeah. tremendous. Yeah, I think it shows that you know we're all looking for emotional experiences, and I think um, the Formula One engagement shows as well the emotional side of Audi. As much as we do this in other areas of sustainability and electrification, this is also part of the emotional side of the brand and therefore a perfect fit. All right. I think uh, we'll leave it there. And to the both of you, thanks once again for your time and uh, just engaging and indulging us with uh, your plans as Audi for the future of a mobility premium uh, mobility as you do see it. South Africa's power outages may be seen as a roadblock for the success of electric vehicles in the country. But this is not necessarily the case. Audi sheds light on how it's driving through the darkness in its Conversation of Progress series, available on its website. From myself, Fifi Peters, it's bye for now. <laughs>